Hi, everybody. Thanks for tuning back into our YouTube page or social media platform that you're watching this on. And today we have a project that we did right here for our own county. Uh, this was an RV that uh, I went and picked up for them over in New Jersey, actually. Since we have our used car dealership license, we can do that. We picked this RV up. This was just a standard RV, and we transformed it into a command center. And that's what we're going to show you here today a little walk around tour of the vehicle. So this was an RV when we got it. It had all kinds of RV graphics on it. Um, and we transformed this. As you can see the exterior, we painted it black. We have our own paint booth in house. So we painted it black inside. Our market graphics team installed some graphics on it. We have a logo here in the front along with some striping as well. So the reason why the, the county went this route versus us building a full unit because they saved at least a million dollars um, by doing that. So. Uh, this will still give the community and the, and, and, uh, the uh, emergency service department what they need, um, but they saved a lot of money doing it um, this way, taking an RV and transforming it versus building something from the ground up on a, on, a, on a chassis cab. So we have wheel and lighting on the outside. As you can see, we have it flashing right now. This does have core in it um, for you uh, lighting enthusiasts. Um, we have core in it, which has expansion packs throughout the vehicle, which lets us run wiring shorter distances. Uh, right now we have it in slider position three, so it's, it's flashing the red white. The top M9 up there, that bottom version is also a scene light function as well. We have a, another scene light here in the side, and then the same way on the other side as well for scene lighting. Pioneer Summit up top in the very front um, on, a, on a bracket. And then uh, your warning lights in the front and all around the vehicle as we go around it here. Uh, there is a TV set up here on the side. This was something that was that was uh, in the RV right you know right away. As we go through a tour here, you're going to see a ton of data cable in this, and that is going to be finished by the IT department um, at the county, and they're going to terminate all those all those ends. Uh, we we'll go back through the back here. We have onboard inverters, onboard chargers on it. Uh, so this can be either a plugged in run on generator or running off the motor of the vehicle. We have uh, power packs down here in the bottom. So battery power pack systems that are custom mounted. So we gutted this entire thing. Um, the, the sewer tanks, the gray water tanks, the whole, enti the whole interior, everything underneath that's not needed was completely removed uh, because why have it if you don't need it? So all that stuff was removed. Um, from the vehicle. They do not have a bathroom in this. Um, big, incidents, big incidents like this, that this would be used on, they always get a portable bathroom system or something anyways. Um, and let's be honest, you don't want somebody using the bathroom when there's a whole bunch of people and they're running the command center. Uh, as we go back to the side, you're gonna see different things. There was windows down here in the sides. So you're gonna see why there's not a window there now. So that was obviously covered up. Um, as we go back through, we have cord reels in it as well at some different spots. I believe there's one right here in this compartment. And as we go to the back, you're going to see one of the really neat features, which is a huge mass Wilbert Tower mass, which has a optical zoom up top. Uh, and it's an incredible camera device. It's, it's controlled inside. And then it's all prepped up there. Yes, those wire ties are long for a reason right now. If anybody catches that, those are the wire ties that the customer are allowed to cut to be able to wire in their antennas when they're ready to put their antennas up there. So that's why those wire ties are, certain ones are long right now, because I know somebody's going to catch that. We installed another AC unit on the top. You can't see that right now, but there's another AC unit on the top. So this unit has three AC units on it. So we can make sure we can cool the interior enough on it. And then up on top, which you can't see either, there is some big uh, plates up top that are mounted on the roof, which allow mounting of other things, GPS devices, uh, other antennas and things of that nature, because these have that uh, rubber roof on it. So you can't just drill through the rubber roof to mount an antenna, it doesn't work. Um, ground planes and all that stuff doesn't work. So we mounted plates up on the roof to be able to uh, properly mount that stuff. As we move around to the back and over to this other side, um, we have the cord reel here that comes out on this side along with another extension cord. But the other thing that's really unique is, is these generators that come in the RVs are not big enough to run this type of command support, command structure. So we uh, are partnered with PowerTech for our generators, one of our generator brands that we use. 
and we custom fabricated and made this huge generator fit in this little area. So a couple of things that are important with this are noise. Um, you can only get these things so quiet, but one thing that we did to get noise is we fully insulated that compartment with heat tape, with heat material and insulation to, to dampen the noise inside. And the unit also sits on airbags. So all that suspension piece that we make go up underneath to the frame rail, and then the generator itself sits on an airbag so it keeps the vibration down. You don't get that vibration up through and inside to the vehicle. So something else that we've done here. Keep in mind, everything that you're seeing here is done 100% in-house. We don't sub this out. We don't say we have it in-house and bring subcontractors in. Everything that we've done to this vehicle, inside and out, has all been done right here at 911 Rapid Response and with the helps of our friends up at the, our apparatus department, Vengeance Apparatus. We're gonna go inside here in a second um, and then show you the rest of the inside. Okay, so inside the RV, as you notice, it's, you're gonna see a lot of changes here that, that uh, came with the RV that we removed. The front here, we have the wheel and controller. That controller we have set on the time delay. This unit is made that you can have the ignition off, run the generator, and still operate your scene lights and your emergency warning lights on the outside without the engine itself running of the vehicle. So we have a longer time delay on that so it doesn't shut off because that is controlled by an ignition sense is how that works. Uh, slider positions one, two, and three, do different lighting controls on the outside. And then we have your scene light buttons up across the top along with some DVI pattern as well. As we look on the inside up here, um, we took a bed liner type coating material on all these compartments and these fascias and we coated these so you didn't have that old school RV um, brown look on the inside. You know, it is still important to uh, maintain some professionalism and not have it look 100% like an RV inside. And that's one way that we were able to do that. Another thing that you're going to see inside the vehicle is, is you're going to see the walls are all lined with a whiteboard material. So we installed whiteboard material on all of these. And to do that, we took out the window frames, mounted the whiteboards, cut the window frames back out, reinstalled the windows. So we have a nice clean edge the whole way around the windows of the whiteboard. Makes it look really nice. The original RV had a sink here, had your stove and your refrigerator. Of course, we ripped all that out. We don't need that. And then we built custom shelving in here for them to be able to put things and kept the two gas stoves that are in it as well. So they have heat in the wintertime, one located here, one located in the back that you'll see in a little bit. Down through the center here and over on this side, you would have had a couch, you would have had some different things um, to sit on, you would have had the, the net table. That was all removed. So we removed all that stuff and we put a conference table here that we made um, in-house, folded to the floor. This is actually offset. So the poles down this table are offset actually right here. Okay, it's hard to see them, but they're right here and it overhangs because the floor slides in underneath that and it allows this slide out to still work properly. When the slide out is in, they'll still have room for all their chairs all on the side and you'll still be able to walk down this side over here because this here doesn't change when the slide out comes in. We have the two factory AC units on the roof, um, which are all ducked in through. Those are up front here. We added the one in the back because if the door is shut, we wanna make sure that the, back, the, the folks there in the back have good cooling power there in the back. So this is more of a, a roundabout um, type table conversation here that would happen. And then in the back is where the 911 dispatch center is. So as we swing around here to the back, um, another thing that you'll see is, is, is all this channeling is all aluminum. This isn't plastic stuff. This is all the wiring that's held behind here. Um, in RVs, it's very hard to run. It's practically impossible because it's like a spray foam type material in between these walls and you just can't run wires in it. So that's what this is. These are aluminum tracks that we made in house with a ton of power options around, mounted all the TVs for them as well as you can see. And here's this joystick which controls the uh, big camera up on top that they'll be able to put up and display on the TV as well. As we come through to the back, this would have been uh, a bunk bed area actually is what this would have been right here. Converted that, made that into a, into a place to put a fridge, a microwave, um, some extra storage cabinets. This does slide across. So you have a little bit of noise separation here between the two. As we move through to the back, this would have been the bathroom. We would have walked in this area for the bathroom, but instead we mounted and installed a server rack. So this is where the server rack system is to be able to get in here. Um, and uh, they can easily access everything right here to get into their server rack. We added a generator panel. 
We obviously have the transfer switch to go from shore power to generator. So this would be if you're familiar with house um, generator power, we did the same way, same thing here. And then we had the generator startup power here and then more controls that we transferred from the original RV and put them all here at one spot for slide out controls, interior lighting and things of that nature. To move to the back, we did do a full, um, took out the wardrobe area, which would have been right here and made all this customized um, uh, console area and area to put things. And this is all a maple wood, uh, wood material. And then it's all, it's all coated in our bed liner coat material that we use. Maple wood, that way it holds up very well. It's actually a little lighter than particle board, but much better quality. Costs more money, of course, but a lot better quality, longevity out of it for the customer. As you move through to the back here, you're gonna see the, the 911 dispatch area. This is made to put two um, dispatchers up here at one, at one spot. They can put up here, obviously we have a lot of other boxes and left stuff left here for the customer that obviously comes out. And then um, we have other areas here as well, console areas as well for, for them to sit at. The AC unit was mounted here in the roof. And then we have a temperature gauge for that AC unit back here. One may ask, how do we get in the back of the server room? So what we did is here in the back side is this panel that's laying here on this table can go right in here. And that is to be able to be removed. This is removable shelves that sit in here. This can be removed. And then you can actually step and stand in there and have plenty of room if you want to work at something at the back of the server rack that you might not be able to access from the front side. So we still give you good access from that. Our core system is mounted right here with our volt link wiring system mounted all there in the wall. And then we transferred and brought down the uh, 12 volt side of the RV itself with the fuses down here at the bottom, just so they're still accessible to the customer. So I hope what you like, what you see here, you like. Um, it's just a really cool trans transform of, of, of an RV. Um, you know, shows you our capabilities here at Rapid Response and what we can do. And more importantly, what we can do to get the customer in a very tight budget, you know, so saving them a lot of money, saving the, uh, the community a lot of money as well but giving the first responders and the emergency personnel something to work out of that they haven't had something like this ever before here in this county. And I'm personally, and I know my staff is very personally proud to be able to do something like this for them. So thanks everybody for watching. Um, if you ever buy the area, like always, stop in, ask for a tour, keep checking us out on social media. We're growing leaps and bounds and uh, we are doing it with great employees and great customers like yourself. Thanks everybody and have a great day.